Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We are studying the subject of healing and we are now looking at specific diseases that are named in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 under the curse of the law that now we know we are redeemed from. Now let me back up just a minute and remind you the curse of the law is the same thing as the curse of sin and death. The curse of sin and death came in Genesis chapter three, the instant that Adam and Eve sinned, they were, the curse came and, um, then the law, the curse of the law is it's in the book of Leviticus and Deuteronomy, but it's specifically detailed in chapter 28 of Deuteronomy. And that is the same thing as the curse of sin and death. It's just a place where it's listed in detail. And so we are seeing a detailed list and description of what is the curse, the curse of sin and death, the curse of the law. And we first have to look at the New Testament. Galatians 3.13 says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Hallelujah. So we are redeemed from the curse of the law. Now, then also Romans chapter 8 Verse two says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free, free, free from the law of sin and death. And I've said to you that the law of sin and death is the same thing as the curse of sin and death and also called the curse of the law. So it's the curse of the law of sin and death, the curse of sin and death, the curse of the law all are the same. And so we see in Romans 8 two, the law, of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free. So we are free from the curse of sin and death, the curse of the law and Galatians 3.13. We are redeemed from the curse of the law. So we are now looking in Deuteronomy 28 to see the detailed description of of what does the curse produce? What are the results of the curse? And in these verses, I am primarily picking out the verses that have to do with sickness and disease. There are other verses about being attacked by your enemies and losing everything you have, but I'm skipping those verses and specifically pulling out the verses to do with sickness and disease because we are talking about healing. And so, we were just studying yesterday in verse 59, that is Deuteronomy 28, 59. And it says, the Lord will send fearful plagues. Now that word fearful actually means extraordinary, surpassing, too hard and too difficult to bear. And then there's the word plagues. It actually means blows, beatings, and wounds, and scourging, and defeat. Blows, beatings, wounds, scourging, and defeat. And the Young's literal translation translates it strokes. Strokes. So you see here that you are redeemed from strokes, wounds, scourgings, beatings, and defeat. So you can say, I am redeemed and free from strokes. And then it says on you and your descendants. And there we see that relates to and indicates the genetic and hereditary diseases and problems. So anything that you might have that you could say, well, my father had this, my grandfather had it, or my mother had it, my grandmother had it, where you can see it runs in the family. You can say, well, this just runs in the family. Those things you are redeemed from. You are redeemed from everything genetic, hereditary, or anything generational, what runs in the family. And you are redeemed from these things. So you need to say, as I shared with you yesterday, you could say the buck stops here. You could say the line is drawn right here. That will not be passed on to me. I don't receive that. I 
apply the blood of Jesus. You can say, draw the bloodline between me and my ancestors, and it will not be passed down to me because I am redeemed and free, free, free from everything that runs in the family, genetic or hereditary diseases and problems. Glory to God. You need to say it stops with you. you. I mean, you don't get it. You don't pick up what has been in your family in previous generations. And then it goes on to say after that, harsh and prolonged disasters, so that's lingering, prolonged disasters, disasters. And the next one says severe and lingering illnesses, severe and lingering illnesses. Well, severe can include violent illness, but the lingering illness I want to point out to you also translated persistent illness persistent illness. Do you have an illness that is persistent, lingering? Another translation, long lasting, long lasting. Do you have any illness, disease, pain that has been lingering, persistent, or long lasting? You need to say, I am redeemed from long lasting, persistent and lingering illnesses and diseases and pains. Amen. Another translation of that is suffering, lingering suffering. That would include pain. Torment is another word. The Tanakh translates it as malignant. There again, we see the cancer. New American Standard translates it miserable and chronic illness and sickness. Do you have any miserable condition or do you have a chronic that has again to do with lingering, long lasting, persistent? It, another word is chronic. Do you have anything chronic? This says that this chronic disease and illness is under the curse. Having a chronic, long-lasting, lingering, persistent illness or suffering or pain would be under the curse. So you need to say, I am redeemed from chronic, lingering, long-lasting, and persistent illness and pain. In Jesus name, I am free. According to Romans eight, two, you, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And we already talked about the spirit of life is the power of resurrection, resurrection, power, resurrection, life living and dwelling in you now, because the spirit of life is in you. Now, the spirit of life makes you free from the law, the curse of sin and death. And that includes chronic, long lasting, persistent, lingering illness or pain. You know, some people, some of these crazy wrong doctrines people have made up because they don't get healed. They make up reasons why they're still sick. And so they say sometimes that it might not be God's will to heal you right now that you need to suffer a while to learn something or whatever reason, but not right now. You're not healed. You need to suffer for a while. Well, this just blows that wrong doctrine right out of the water because long lasting, persistent, lingering, chronic illness is not God's will. It is defined specifically as part of the curse. It is a part of the definition and description of the curse. Anything lingering, long lasting and persistent. So don't think God wants you to have it for a little while to suffer for a while. 
No, it's part of the description of the curse of sin and death, the curse of the law, and you are redeemed from it and you are supposed to be free of it right now. Nothing is supposed to linger on you. Everything is supposed to be gone now. Glory to God. God does not want anything lingering, any sickness, disease, or pain lingering on and on and on in your body. He already paid for your healing and he wants you healed now. Glory to God. Now let's look down in verses 60 and 61, 60 and 61. And it says, he will bring upon you all the diseases of Egypt that you dreaded. They will cling to you. Verse 61, the Lord will also bring on you. Now notice we already talked about the the phrase, bring on you, afflict you. We see there that it's under the old covenant before Christ. Judgment came quickly. Judgment came quickly. And it was really that sin opens the door to the curse to manifest quickly. And so it says every kind in verse 61, notice verse 61, every kind of sickness and disaster not recorded in this book of the law. It it will come on you until you are destroyed. So notice then I have listed or not. I, the Bible listed. I read to you from the Bible. I read to you scriptures from Deuteronomy 28 listed in the Bible, specific diseases, sicknesses, conditions, disorders, that are specifically named in the curse of the law. But now verse 61 says, and every kind of disease not recorded in this book of the law will come upon you until you are destroyed. So that means you say, well, Cherry, you didn't name my problem. Well, good. Verse 61 covers you. Verse 61 covers you. If you said, well, Cherry, you didn't name my problem, then verse 61 covers you because it says every kind of sickness and disaster not recorded in this book of the the law will come on you until you are destroyed. So yours wasn't named specifically. It's listed here in the category, every kind of sickness. Amen. Amen. So glory to God, you are covered. You're covered. Your condition, your illness, your problem, it's covered right here. Praise the Lord. And then it goes on in verse 65. In verse 65, it says, and among these nations, this is after you are going to be scattered to the nations, you will find no ease So if you find no ease, no peace, that is part of the curse. Having no peace is under the curse. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. So if you feel like you never get rest, that's under the curse. No ease, no peace, that's under the curse. No rest. If you feel like you just are slaving and working day and night, seven days a week, 365 days a year, that's under the curse. You should not do that because God has ordained that we should all get at least one day of rest. We we call it Sunday. We should get one day of rest every week. And then it says, and the Lord shall give you a trembling Heart, trembling heart. Well, that can be both physical and emotional. If you have a heart physically that does maybe irregular heartbeat, trembling heart, irregular heartbeat, or maybe blockages, that cause an irregular flow of blood. Irregularity in the heart 
irregular heartbeat, irregular flow, anything irregular about the heart physically can be included in this description of a trembling heart. But that also includes the emotional heart. Emotional heart, meaning a trembling heart being anxiety. That can include anxiety and fear and, again, the panic attacks. The panic attacks. Another translation is anguishing heart. Anguishing heart heart. So there is worry. And then anxiety is already named anxious and anguishing heart. There is worry. There is also fearful heart. If you're fearful or worried, anxious, anguishing of heart, that is under the curse. Do not accept it. Resist it, rebuke it, resist it, rebuke it. Remember, not having ease, not having peace is under the curse. Well, that then is related to the trembling heart. And that is both physical and emotional. Of course, the physical heart, I told you about the irregularity of the operation of your physical heart. But then there is also the trembling heart, the, the, the emotional heart. There is the anxiety. There is the anguishing. There is the dread, dread, worry, fear of heart. Another translation calls it fearful heart. And again, as I said, panic and panic attacks. If you have any of those, you say, I rebuke it in Jesus name. I will not have an anxious heart. I will not have a fearful heart. I will not have a panic attack. I will not be anguishing and dreading in my heart. I receive ease and peace of heart and mind in Jesus name. Actually, I want to mention that word ease again. It means to to be at rest, repose, settled, quiet, at peace. So peace. If you have no peace, no rest, no repose, no ease, you're not settled. You have no quietness of heart and soul and life. Then that is under the curse. That's the word ease at the beginning of verse 65. And then it goes on and says, and failing of eyes. So there's the failing eyesight, dimness of eyes, wasting eyes. So failing eyesight. And then sorrow of mind. Translated also pining. Does your soul pine? Do you pine after something? Pining of soul, weariness of soul, apathy of spirit. Do you have apathy? That is being having no motivation for anything. It is also languishing soul. It is a spirit of despair. Do you have despair, dismay, a wasting soul, despondent spirit, grief of soul, and depression. There are too many people today who have depression. Now let's look at this again. Pining of, well, the the phrase sorrow of mind can be translated and defined pining of soul. Well, what is pining of soul? Pining means to yearn deeply, yearn deeply, long for something painfully, long for something painfully, and to suffer with longing. So it's a painful longing, a deep yearning that is a suffering. 
And so are you pining for something or someone that is under the curse? Then the next phrase, the next phrase is weariness of soul. Do you feel weary and worn out in your soul? Is your soul tired? Weariness and tiredness of soul. Uh, The next, uh, these are all ways that you can define or translate the phrase sorrow of mind. Another translation is apathy of spirit. What is apathy? It is the absence of passion, emotion, or excitement. Absence of passion, emotion, or excitement. And it is lack of interest or concern. You lose interest in life in general. Apathy of spirit. The next phrase or uh, method, uh, way they translate it, languishing soul, a languishing soul that is lacking in vigor or vitality, lacking in vigor or vitality, lacking in spirit or interest, listless and indifferent, drooping or flagging from weakness or fatigue, faint. So are you becoming, are you languishing? Are you, are you listless, indifferent, drooping? Um, are you losing spirit and interest? Are you flagging from weakness or fatigue? The, uh, the next one is the spirit of despair. Well, we know what that is. It is having no hope, being hopeless, despairing, giving up without hope, giving up without hope. And then dismay. That can be dis- defined as a sudden disillusionment, disheartenment, alarm, dismay is alarm, sudden disillusionment or disheartenment. And then the next one is despondent, a despondent spirit. Well, what is despondent? It means feeling or showing profound hopelessness. Despondent is being having profound hopelessness dejection and discouragement or gloom having profound hopelessness dejection discouragement or gloom now these are all and then it goes on to define it as the grief of soul and depression Depression. All of these are different ways to translate the phrase sorrow of mind. This is in your emotion. This is in your soul realm. If you have felt any of these conditions, then you need to know you are redeemed from pining, from weariness, from apathy, from languishing, from despair, dismay, despondency, depression, hopelessness, grief, sorrow. You are redeemed from these because Christ himself became a curse for you and you are redeemed from the curse of the law and you are made free. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then one more verse here in this chapter that I want to show you is verse 66. The next verse, verse 66. Look at this. This is under the curse. You will live in constant suspense, suspense, filled with dread, both night and day, filled with dread, night and day, never sure of your life. The basic Bible says day and night will be filled with dark, with fears, day and night will be dark with fears and nothing in life will be certain. The Darby translation says your life shall hang in suspense before you and you shall be in terror day and night and shall be afraid of your life. If you're a person who lives in fear or dread constantly, then you need to say, I am free. I am free. I am free. Jesus Christ has redeemed me from all these things. You need to get sassy 
And you need to say, I'm not having this. I do not accept or tolerate these things anymore. In Psalm 107, verse 2, you probably heard this. It says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. When you are redeemed from sicknesses, diseases, pains, dread, fear, and these emotional um, bondages of depression, dismay, despondency, weariness, apathy, languishing, failing heart, failing mind. You need to stand against it and resist it. As I said to you before, in um, 1 Corinthians fifteen twenty six, it says that the last enemy to be defeated and put underfoot is death. Well, that says death is your enemy. Anything that produces death in body or soul or finances or family, anything that produces death, anything that kills death steals and destroys is under the curse and you need to get bold and be aggressively attacking it be aggressive against it and say i am redeemed let the redeemed of the lord say so psalm 107 verse 2 so you need to be bold and say i am redeemed from all these things in jesus name amen well join me again tomorrow and remember god loves you you're blessed and highly favored by the lord